Verizon reported fiscal year 2022 fourth quarter and full year results. I'm going to do a brief review of the figures that investors really need to know from the from this report and then in future videos I'm going to do a deeper dive into Verizon's results but this one's just going to be a brief overview so let's get right into it. So the main theme that I took away here is that Verizon's fourth quarter supports its dividend. I know a lot of investors are interested in Verizon stock because of its very robust dividend yield. And what I look for every quarter, the first thing I look for in Verizon stock is if its results were supportive of its dividend or did it lessen its dividend prospects, right? Was there anything in the results that made me feel that the dividend payment is in danger? And in this quarter's results, it was actually the opposite. It supported the dividend. In fact, it supported maybe a dividend increase from what I took away. So let's look at why that's the case. Overall revenue increased by 3.5% in the fourth quarter to $35.3 billion. Adjusted earnings per share of $1.19 was down from $1.33 in the fourth quarter of 2021. But uh, there were some adjustments. There was uh, the co different comparables. The big takeaway was the postpaid net additions of 217,000 subscribers and retail postpaid net additions of 1.4 million. The best quarterly performance in seven years. This is really, really good for Verizon. That's in a mature industry, right? Everybody that wants a cell phone pretty much has one. And so it, it, I was actually concerned about this quarter's results because T-Mobile has been disrupting the industry with lower prices. And I was concerned that they were going to be taking away customers from Verizon. And that wasn't the case here. Verizon was able to grow its subscriber count. And the difference between postpaid phone net additions and retail postpaid net additions is the other items that you can uh, subscribe to uh, it, cellular data plans for. Think of the Apple Think of the watch, think of smartwatches and um, iPads. You can get cellular data on iPads, right? Or um, other uh, tablets, right? So that's a growth That's a growth industry for Verizon, being able to add those incremental devices onto people's plans. And it's finding ways for growth in a mature industry where investors were thinking that Verizon is done growing, right? It's already reached all of its customers. That might be true, but it can add incremental devices to customer data plans as it showed in this quarter. Uh, total retail postpaid churn, this is the amount of people that cancel their service every month of just 1.14%. And uh, overall retail postpaid churn of 0.89%. Uh, this is higher than I would like to see, but still relatively low. 99% uh, of customers stay with Verizon every month. 1% uh, are, are canceling. But if you look at that over the year, that's 12% of customers canceling or switching in a year. That's, that's higher than I would like to see. But still, if you're adding that many subscribers, that's okay to be losing 1% because on net, you're still adding to your subscriber total. Total uh, broadband net additions. So Verizon doesn't only do uh, uh, wireless. It also does broadband in your home internet. Uh, net additions of 416,000 was the best broadband performance in over a decade. So another really good quarter in terms of adding subscribers, adding new customers. Um, and then they're forecasting wireless service revenue growth of 3.5% at the midpoint for 2023 and adjusted earnings per share of $4.70 for the midpoint in 2023. Really, really good. I, I, I was relieved to see wireless service revenue growth in 2023, even though there's a lot of fears of a recession and consumer pullback in spending, maybe consumers, maybe Verizon was seeing a lot less of the incremental additions in terms of, yeah, maybe people won't cancel their cell phone plan, but maybe they cancel the incremental device. Maybe they don't pay for the cellular data for their Apple Watch or their cellular data for the iPad. So that could have drawn down revenue growth, but Management doesn't expect that when I'm seeing wireless service revenue growth of 3.5%. So all in all, overall, I think this was a really good quarter if you're looking at Verizon 
as from the perspective of a dividend stock investor. OK, so that's all I've got for this video. Um, in the future, in the coming days, you can expect a deeper dive, uh, more thorough analysis of Verizon's uh, fourth quarter results. But that's all for this initial look. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now.